What is Western? Is it a place for cutting edge research where faculty can work to solve the problems facing society? Is it an assembly line for thousands of young people to be rubber stamped ready for a life of responsibility, productivity, and mid price sedans? Is it a new frontier of a global melting pot for different ideas and cultures to collide? We're not sure, are you? Universities are changing, and they're changing fast. Since the Middle Ages, the concept of the university, or at least its purpose, has remained pretty much the same. It is a place where people gather to share information and engage in the pursuit of knowledge. This was a pretty rad idea, and there hasn't been much need to change its core function. Sure, there have been cosmetic changes. We let women learn, Latin went out of vogue, someone learned how to mass produce beer. But there hasn't been any reason to doubt the essential need of universities to educate our best and brightest. In the last 10 years, however, the most important responsibility of our universities, providing a forum for a free exchange of ideas and information, is being called into question. You've all heard of the internet, right? With the advent of technology and crowdsourcing, one's ability to access not only learning, but discussion and evaluation as well, are no longer location or income dependent. Most people agree this is a great thing. However, no one is quite sure what it means for universities as we understand them. If you can get all of that sweet, sweet brain knowledge you need online, whether it's through a webcast lecture or a specialized chat room, why would one pay thousands of dollars to learn the same things, just somewhere that has more snow and a lot more geese? Other aspects of universities in Canada are starting to shift too. Government funding models are reorganizing. Certain schools are starting to specialize to fund specific programs. Globalization is forcing universities to compete not only nationally, but across borders and oceans. None of these shifts mean that things will become bad here at Western, but they mean things will probably become different. And there are a lot of people at the table who have opinions as to what different should look like. We have members of the government at the table, faculty members, university administrators, researchers, there are a lot of people who have a lot of opinions on what kinds of changes need to happen at our schools. With so many people weighing in, it's not difficult for the opinions of students to get lost in the shuffle. We need to turn this around. These changes shouldn't be happening to students, but students should be making the changes. We should be among the decision makers. So how do we get to be a voice at the table? The University Students' Council is first and foremost a body of elected representatives. Councillors and senators are voted in from all different years and faculties and are tasked with representing the student body as a whole through strong policies, bylaws, and the oversight of student fees. Here at the USC, we're proud of what we're able to do for students to make their time here great. We provide hundreds of leadership opportunities, run programs for marginalized communities, throw big concerts, facilitate the country's most robust orientation program, fund and oversee three media outlets, and make a great cup of coffee, just to mention a few things. But sometimes, in our efforts to be the feminist event planning Anderson Cooper barista, it's easy to forget what we need to be most, your voice. So sure, there are some changes coming down the pipes when it comes to how future students seek their education. But at the USC, we've always believed that university is more than a transaction where you hand Western money and they hand you information, and eventually, a piece of paper. Students get more out of learning about the French Revolution from an award-winning professor than by reading Marie Antoinette's Wikipedia page. That's why we advocate for quality teaching standards. We believe that for some students, university isn't just the first time they've left home. It's the first time they have found a home in a place that accepts them for who they really are. That's why we advocate for accessibility and inclusivity provisions for minority students. We believe that students who are being shaped to be leaders in their fields should have the opportunity to do so. That's why we advocate for skills development, career support, and responsible oversight of unpaid work. Someone else might be able to serve you a cup of coffee or facilitate a support group or even oversee the club system. But no one else can bring the perspectives of students to the forums where real decisions are being made. That's the reason it's so important to speak out, to hold your USC counselors accountable, to engage with what matters to you, to vote in February's election, and to make your voice heard. We've all heard the old cliche that university is what you make it. But in this case, university will actually be what we make it. Are you ready?